And so that's my motivation. Like JavaScript was my biggest problem. So that's sometimes why it's good when you have some problem. You try to figure out another way to, to fix that. And so our agenda here, why people use PDF as an attack vector, it's a basic, the basic PDF structure, only to point, like if you never see a PDF structure, I just try to show like the basics. I'm not going to get in the uh, how PDF, just point some tools that we're going to we use, like to analyze PDF and daily basis tasks. And so here, how we score and some statistic that I have, and some place we could put this research to work. So PDF as attack vector. So Adobe Header is everywhere. So that's the point. Like, it's easier to find a, a Adobe header than to find a Windows machine because Adobe header is Mac OS, it has some header in Linux and all that stuff. I, I don't know about numbers. Do you, do you have numbers about how many millions people use Adobe header? Uh, I think they're just over a billion. Billion? More than a billion? Yeah. Wow. So that's so why. Like all the iOS devices have Apple's OK, so that's why. It's, that's a powerful vector. Like, you probably, if you send a PDF to somewhere, it will work. Mm -hmm. So, different ways to use. So, we could f try to, to, to target some f Adobe flaws, like some zero days that they're talking about, or some flaws because people do doesn't update. We could use that as a downloader. So, you have the the PDF, but it has some some code inside that will download the real malware. So that's only to get in, into the company and the easiest way maybe to bypass the first protection because like download something is not malicious. Probably the antivirus will not alert for that. And embedded files like Metsploits use a lot like PDF with some embedded files like especially for Flash players vulnerabilities. Or maybe you want to create something because it's a powerful, <laughs> a powerful file format. So you could create a crazy stuff inside that. So well, that's not supposed. That's <laughs> it's not good. But here it's just a virus total. Like if you look right here, the PDF, how the amount amount of samples we sent to virus total. So we saw that we have a lot of samples. Those numbers not about. Uh, Unix samples, but a lot of samples, PDF samples. So everybody's trying to use PDF and PDF most of the time. So in summary, like just points, like we have in our computers, we have a, a header. Probably everybody has one. It could target other flaws, as I told, like uh, embedded Flash with targeting a Flash player flaw and some Adobe flaws. It's not all about flaws. It could use as downloader. It could have a JavaScript inside, like all that stuff. So that's the first step. So the basic structure, like that's how we we build and we saw it. I'm not getting too much in details here because I will focus on the the research itself. Like I'm just pointing to the basics. So how Adobe Header think it is like? In summary, you have the. The header, we have a lot of objects, we have the cross-reference table, the trailers, and an dot file. Like in summary, that's how the PDF seems like for a for a header. And here a sample that I, I got from Didier Stevens website. And so we have the header, very simple. Like here you have some objects. So we have the cross-reference that points to the offset where the information is and to keep the 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 header faster, and that's it. That's a, a very simple. So it's a plain text. Could be a plain text file mostly. Like, so that's a very simple PDF. But how it re really is for malicious. Like, probably PDF header in the first beginning. If you analyze, it's a malicious type. Like they could, like usually it's something like if you see here. It's basically something like PDF dash and the version mostly, and they could write this wrong. So that's one of the points that I, I show that I'm going to score. So the PDF is a malicious type because they could not type PDF dash one dot one one dot two dot one dot six. 
Here is a malware library, Arca Problems. Like, here inside the objects, you have a lot of potential ways to do something malicious. That's, that's how the malware is. And here are more typos, because mostly they don't need those information. There. Like, it will work. If you create the objects in the right way, it will mostly be handled by the Adobe. So here's the same. Like, here is nothing. Here's problem, problem plus a JavaScript API. We have a JavaScript API inside the, the, the PDF. So that's, that's why another reason that they use too much the PDF. And here it's nothing and still nothing, like for malicious purpose. And so how we analyze PDFs today? So here are a bunch of tools. Do you guys work with PDF daily analysis? Do you work, do you analyze malicious PDF or not? No, that's okay. So we have PDF ID and PDF parser. We have the Oregon PDF framework. It's Ruby. If you are a Ruby developer, you could use to handle, to handle and parse PDFs. Have PDF, JS Unpack, online and the command line version. We have some online tools like VCheck, PDF X-Ray. We have a Razorback that they have some, some they do some analysis from certified. It's, and we have a lot of others too, like so here. Here where I start my research with the PDF ID. Like when you, you type PDF ID, it's a, it's a tool from Didier Steven, against a PDF file, it will print something like this, basically. Like if you have the same numbers of, of objects and end objects, if you have string and end string, like if you're building a, a PDF, if you start an object, you need to have an end object, right? You need to close. So we have cross-reference. So we have the number of pages if they are using encryption, object string, JavaScript, JavaScript, open action, acroform, JBIG to the code, rich media, like if you have flash player embedded to have rich media. If you have embedded files, like you could have a PDF with uh, off document embedded. And so to, to, to target uh, off flow, not the so embed a file, you are trying to bypass protection because if the, the protection does open the PDF and handle the embedded file to and analyze both separate, like looking only the PDF is not malicious. So that's a bunch of information. So man, that's, well, that's unreadable anyway. <laughs> like, so this PDF parser and his, this stuff like, you probably could not read, but anyway, you're not going to read. It's the JavaScript, a piece of a JavaScript. Like, that's something insane. Like, you cannot read that. So when I first started my research and my problems, I tried to, to get this out of the PDF and try to parse and analyze to see what's going on. And this is not the most complex. Like, you could break in different objects and handle in and this, this, the Oregon, the, the image is so bad, sorry. The Oregon PD, uh, framework is the same as the PDF ID, like the, 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 the full version that you have PDF scan, like it will show like what you have. You have object string and objects, string, some parameters here. So you just show the structure of the file, it's not show the payload. So problems that you have analyzed PDF with those tools, mostly, are manual analysis. So like when you're talking about a lot of samples and probably get thousands of samples per week, that's not going to work unless you have like a thousand of security research, research. So that JavaScript, it's a pain. So that embedded file must be analyzed too. Doesn't mean like if you have a PDF file with embedded file, doesn't mean that's malicious. Like could they have the, 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 the function to embed the files for, for good purpose, not for malicious. That's, they are using for malicious. We have the rich media. So if you have a flash inside, you need to analyze, like the PDF and the flash, for example. We have obfuscation, and mostly our signature base. So signature is like you need to know to protect. So that's a kind of problem. Especially when you're talking about something that could be encoded and like, oh, and a lot of obfuscation as JavaScript. So 
So that's some problems. Oops. Another problem, like you could have an object with no encoding. So you could add a filter and have an encode, so it will look like this. And so what's the problem here? Like the protection should know how to decode that to see if there is something malicious. But you could have the encode of the encoded. So the protection must open and so see no, it's it's still encoded and open again, for example, like like this, it's to the code. Like in terms for a protection side of view, it's pretty complex that like how I will handle that if and if I put like a lot of encodes inside I don't know how many encodes we could have, like if, you, if there is some limits or not. Encode forever. So like imagine if I put like a hundred encodes here. Like I will then I'll serve the protection if the protection try to open out the encodes. So that's another vector of obfuscation that the the malicious guys could use. And that's another problem to the research. We need to analyze that. So you need to open out the encoding and analyze. And so imagine like you have like 10 encodings. And so inside that encode, you have a very obfuscated JavaScript. And so you need to obfuscate the JavaScript and work on that. So that's something crazy. Like you analyze like one PDF per week, maybe. So. So that's kind of JS impact signature. Like, if you try to look for something like for media dot new player, and so you trigger it out. Possibly you have this CV inside this PDF. So that's a kind of simple and pretty easy to encode and bypass. But that's so like signature based. And so, based on all this stuff that I talked about and talked and talked and complain and say that's not that good. Sure that we need that, all that manual analysis and other things. I, I was frustrated that I could not parse the JavaScript and all that stuff. And I tried to see a different way to detect the malicious PDF. So I start to, to analyze PDF. So I analyzed thousands of malicious PDF. Like, uh, I think I analyzed something, analyze, with the the structure. I didn't take care about the the payloads, because if I need to look into all payloads, it, I'm still researching about that. So something around twenty thousand malicious PDF I analyzed. So it's a good number. A lot of regular files. Like in the beginning, I just grab a couple something, but currently we have this. This is scoring running in our mail server. So we receive a bunch of PDFs. So we have a good research, research like to see when you have some false positives. And I use, I will talk after, by the end of the talk, like some problems that you have. Like one of the problems you have, like, and you notice, like, when you're, we're talk, talking about buffer overflows, like the exploitation about some headers problem like the they they showed like the three the u3d to two different exploits and the the talk and one they just change a bit the 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 function like so they don't doesn't ch change the structure so if you don't change the structure i will not detect so that's the bad side for us but when i talk about exploit kits that mostly what's arrived for us, they use it to change a lot the structure. So that's the good, the good news. And so we have another point. We have samples from 2007. Maybe I think we have some from 2006. But and so that's the big true. Like the payloads changed a lot, but if you look, the structure are mostly the same. So that's that's the trick. Like analyzing a lot of samples, you, you saw that the malicious PDF it's supposed to have those structure. Like if you run PDF ID, it will have some like one page, zero page. They you have like some JavaScript. They have op action. They ha you have some combination of that, and so it will point that's malicious or not. And so 
here are some functions that we detect, like analyzing, like the malicious sample. So what, what, how I started? I started with five, five functions, like what I saw, like JavaScript and open action and one page. And basically, I run the, the PDF ID, for example. And if you have one page and JavaScript, I will score one. If I have JavaScript, I score plus one. So it's, it's part of the PDF ID, I will score something. And so like my very first version, it was five things. Like if it was the score bigger or equal three, it will alert. So I just run against the malware, work it. But when I run against the regular files, it works it too. Like everything is malicious. So that's not OK. So I figure out, OK, I need to improve that. But the good side was I could detect. I, I know that we have a behavior here. Like, so what I figure out, like, OK, I will run against the malicious and against the regular files. And I will try to find more and more um, functions. Let's call functions. Everything is a function. So basically, now we, ha we analyze more than 20 functions, 20 outputs, different outputs. And we analyze some combination of that output. And so, for example, like some, some behaviors add like something 1.5, something, for example. And some will decrease the score. So we could have a balance for regular files and non-regular files. And so that's the trick, like the mix of combination of scoring, like it's a bit similar like at span, like at span we got like if you have reverse, if you have something related with IP reputation, if you have this subject, if you have that, oh, it's score more than my threshold, so it's malicious. And so that's how I pick that. And so we look for JavaScript stuff. JavaScript, you could see like around seven. 5% of the malicious file have JavaScript. So that's a good vector. Like, If you have JavaScript and if you have flat decode, that's the most common in code that they use. It's called flat decode. And if you have one page only, it's pretty common that the malicious PDF has one page only. So, and so like, you could say that, OK, so if I have those four, it's malicious. No, it doesn't work. That's, that's the problem. Because we have a big problem, and that's where I, I work more, I spend more of my time turning this, those numbers or the scoring, is the, the forms. When you have a PDF with working as a form, they have JavaScript inside, they probably could have some embedded file, that's crazy. And so, that's where we need to find some gaps and some more points to score and decrease and increase the score. If, if you ask me, like, how you choose the scores that you're talking here, I will show more. But it's try and error. That's how it's working. Like, we are going to improve that. Because, like, I work as research. And this started as my free time stuff. Like, I, well, I'm doing nothing now. I will try to do something different. And until you prove that it, this really works, the company will not really care about that. Because they will not put money and say, oh, no, here are a couple of machines, build a lab and something more, more intelligent. And No, that doesn't work, right? So now it's working. So, but this is have something like, like I say, like, I think it's for 1.5 to something that would decrease 0 0.5. But it's something like we have some 0 0.735 at score. That's not a learning machine. It's my brain machine. Like, let's try this. And so try again, and try again, and try again. That, that's how. And it's working. And so, as I told, we compared. Like, so let's compare the same functions in red. It's the uh, malicious and green is the regular, right? And so we start to compare. Look, if you look on the regular files, only a couple have JavaScript. So, OK. So when you saw these JavaScript functions, you could score more. 
but itself doesn't mean that's malicious, but it could add a bigger score than something that's it's pretty common, something like, so that's interesting, like one page PDF. So in samples that I analyzed, that's pretty common to have only one page PDF. So like, it's pretty equal, so it could not add a lot of score because, and so here you have the, the, the biggest difference, like JavaScript is pretty unique, if you get like acroform, it's most common in malicious files. If you get like action and AA, that's a kind of action, it's most common in malicious file. Open action, it's most, most common in malicious file. So I add a little bit more of score. So that's how it's, and, but here, that's something <laughs> crazy because the, I, I, when I start, I, I suppose the cross table that end object and start object that need to be the same numbers will be most incorrect in malware, but the regular files, they are more common. I don't know why they, and so like the JBIG decode, like it's more common in regular files. So working with this information, we start to point the score like, and so like if you have these will increase the score. Like if you have that, will you decrease the score? So we start to balance. And another point is the file size. That's, that's the interesting uh, part. Let me see the time. Uh, that's the interesting part when we're talking about, about behavior. If you look, it doesn't matter where in the file or somewhere, you always find some big difference in somewhere. Like here, and the file size are mostly the same, but in this 11K to 3K file size, it's where like almost 4 to 5% of the malicious samples sit. So I could, based on the size, add some score too. Because like, there is supposed to be smaller, especially because PDF could be and it is almost a plain test file with a lot of functions and when it's handled, they are beautiful, but. And if you're doing something malicious, it just puts a, a bunch of information there doesn't need to be a big file like. And so here you have some, some, some parts that is almost equal, like it's not a big difference that I could say, no, I could add some score here or not. And that's fun that to have very very big files. <laughs> Probably there is some there is some files that have like ten embedded files and that's crazy things and they are not malicious. <laughs> I don't know why they need too much files. And, and and I think there is a book that they call PDF hacking or something like this, but not PDF hacking for malicious, but PDF hacking to create good PDFs, smaller with well. And so the file size besides all that function is another vector. And so that's bad. After doing all that, based on that statistic analysis and create this coin, we run all the samples against virus total and against PDF score that has the call. What, the first, what surprised me a lot, GData, is the best antivirus ever for PDF. I don't know, because I don't know nobody that uses GData, but they are really good. Uh, I don't know if you could see here, GData, they have something around 95% detection. That's insane. So PDF score was the second. Like when I started the research, PDF score was better than GData. Now they are better than us. So I get a little first state. I need to improve my research. <laughs> but we are detecting something around 92 to 93%. What's awesome, because we are not looking for payload. And like, if they release some new PDF, we will detect. Unless they start to change how they write the PDF. But they need to use the functions, and some of the functions will be somewhere and they need to print. And so like, the third one was Avast, Sophos, Kaspersky, in here, I don't know what is that A square squared. I never heard about, but it detects like 0.1% of the samples. 
that's <laughs> no probably probably is a false positive yeah probably is not the reg the only like uh, and and so, 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 some antivirus like I, I I suppose that not thirty two was good they are not good as I suppose panda I get like little surprise they are very bad with PDF at least. <laughs> Like those tests are related with the PDF samples that I tested only. Like it's not related about. And so, like we have those. So so. We are the second now. Like we got more than ninety percent. What is a, a very nice detection rate. And especially because we are running in the real server, a real world. Like we have in production. So, we really care about false positives because. Our customer doesn't like when you block a form, like because usually it's something important. Like, and that's fun, like because our engine it's run after the antivirus. No, after yeah, after the antivirus, and we are detecting and blocking around a thousand samples a day. So you could see, like, I, I'm not going to say the name that antivirus we use, but but they're not not doing very well. And basically what we scored, like currently 20 more functions, like, and I'm working on more research to improve in the next months. Like I'm, I'm working on like, I noticed that we have some very uncommon, when you run PDF ID to output everything, you have some crazy names and some long names that are, and the malicious files that I, I'm getting to add to this and probably will help more. Uh, I'm looking again for new features that I could try to, to print and create that kind of comparison like, oh, here's the regular, here's the malicious, oh, here is, is the big gap. So here's, I will put more and less points. We have some combinations flag, like we have a, a flag that we call the, the magic combination <laughs> that when you have something that has an open action or something that will make something open when you open a file, combine with something that could be malicious as an embedded file, a JavaScript file. And I don't know, I, I don't think I, I showed, but if you came here, uh, where is it? That's the big difference too, you see? Like the match combination, that's something action, but a malicious. It's mostly happen only on the, the malicious samples. And that's a trick, like where you get something that's re really relate with the malicious only. So you try to see different behaviors. And we work with a threshold, like that's a good size, like if they change the, the, the P, how they write malicious PDF, we could decrease or increase the threshold. And so we have like some good results. Like we will keep improving that and we could try to see what the, is going on. Maybe need to do everything again and create some status. But basically it's how it works. And to see like how this is dynamic and different, like this, we got almost a hundred different score. So we score a lot of things in different ways. Like, so the most common score was this number. I, I'm bad with numbers, so I'm not telling the numbers. <laughs> it's six dot eight something. <laughs> I get confused. And so like the true show that we are using now is true. Like to show any score bigger than true, it's malicious. And so like we have like some crazy numbers. Like you could see like the numbers that I'm using because like we have seven one seven five. Right? It's all different numbers. And one one of the points. It's uh, a bigger result doesn't mean that it's more malicious. Like it's just a combination of stuff. Like doesn't mean like if this is four dot five and the other is. 10 doesn't mean that the other is more dangerous or this is less dangerous. So that's the way you do something like we have one page, so we detect to have the JavaScript stuff, we have open action, 
we have acroform, we have action, so we have open action, action, and JavaScript. So we have the match combination, like. And so I don't remember the the values here by head, but we get this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this, you get the score of four dot five. And so we tell no, this is malicious. Why? Because it's bigger than two, and this combination points to something malicious. And so it's it's something like uh, I'm doing something very simple. I'm doing probably the opposite that, that most people try to do. Like they look in the, and try the com the complex stuff. I'm just looking to the basics, like the structure. And. False positive, as I told you, we are running our mail service. So we test a lot. So, and we have a lot of ideas to improve that. And one of my, my ideas is to release a code about this scoring stuff. I could not release so far, but I hope I could release in in future. And especially because I need to improve. And the funniest part, like my proof of concept, is a per script that I did. What's mean that it's not good, but it's work. It's something around 200 lines. It's nothing compared with an, an antivirus solution or something uh, protection. It's nothing, and you got like something around 93% detection. That's crazy. And if you look the same approach that. If you look on the structure and behaviors, I don't know if, if you saw the another Rodrigo spoke at Black Hat. He works for, for Qualys. And he did the same approach for detection binaries, malicious binaries. But like if you have a packer, if you have anti-debugging, if you have something, so this is malicious because it has that. A regular software doesn't have besides Skype. So another point, like, is this files malicious? Like, you have bad cross reference table. It has zero page. That's great. Sometimes it points like zero page. Why, why a file has zero page? <laughs> they have open action. They have action. And so this is malicious? No, this is not malicious. Like, that's clean. Or it's a big false negative for other indices, like, and PDF score. But What's, what's the trick here? Like, if you look, you don't have like the malicious stuff. Like, you don't have JavaScript, you don't have embedded file, you don't have something that could hurt. Doesn't matter that you have a, an action, for example, that we do some something when you open a file. So it's not malicious. I'm on time. So. Any question about the research itself? Have you tried looking at it over time to see if the scores change as people find new exploits or old exploits get fixed? I, I compare it like I, I use, oops. NP, NPDF, I have access. Um, so I get a little bit paranoid, like, and I run again against PDF score, like, and as I told, like they change mostly the payload, but uh, they always keep the same structure. They don't care yet about that because the the protection companies, the uh, antivirus companies, they don't look for that. So why they are going to change? Like it, it's, it's the same as Brazilian malware. If you look the code, it's the truth. It's a piece of shit. It's it, I already downloaded a file, a malicious Brazilian banker with 37 megabytes. But it works. So why do you do something better? And so, oops. And so I, I think, I think that they didn't care about the structure at all. So as I told, like, they changed the the, inter the the internal payload, the JavaScript or an, where they're targeting. But they need the JavaScript. They need some open action because they need to when you open the file, they need to run something. And so it's. Mostly the same. I don't know if there is some way to avoid this and have the same success rate. Because maybe they will try to do some interaction with the user. Click here to run this. 
And so I don't know, maybe it's not going to work. Because like, it's pretty common, like when to get inside the company as like you put an embedded file in a PDF and send to the human research, like, oh, here are my resume, take a look. And so she will click, something you run the background, you never know, and you, yeah, you probably will be inside the company. So that's how it works. And so where to use it? Some ideas, like to use in some web application firewall, like so you could avoid the malicious guy to host malicious content in your server. So that could be a good point, especially if you get the big content provider as Amazon and Google, they, they have a bunch of samples malicious being hosted. Some content filtering, like you could like avoid if the user is trying to click in some phishing link. You could try to protect them maybe with the scoring and so. But in real time, it's, I don't know exactly, like in the mail server, like if you have like one second delay, like analyzing a file, it's not a big deal. But on the, on the real, real time, like content filtering, but it's only about the PDF, so maybe it's not a, a, a big problem. And running with the AV agents. For AV, maybe it's difficult because like some, it's too generic, like they were alert for something like unknown malware. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they don't like that idea. You could use some scripts to try to fi find some, something in them. You could do something in the header integration, like uh, analyzing much more samples, like probably have millions of samples that you could have access. Create a very good score and when a user opens something that seems to be malicious, like based on the score, just alert. You're not going to, to block, just alert. As, as Microsoft, with, if you have macros inside, oh, this file contains macro. Do you really want to run? And maybe you could do the same, like this, as you did with the U3D. Like, this file contains, this seems malicious. Do you want to open? Or do you want to open without JavaScript? Or maybe you want to open, or no, just close. So that could be, I think here is the place. Because you teach the user to click on the correct stuff. But it doesn't depend on me or. <laughs> or maybe some, in the, uh, not IDS integration by itself, because it's hard to put this in the real time traffic, but Hazerback, it's uh, almost real time analysis that it send and analyze and so generate alert, that could be a good place. That's some ideas. And at Mail Server, as I told already, like. Like some research, we have a blog, blog.spiderlabs. We have the global security reports that has a bunch of information that all the information we handle. The Spider Labs Twitter and my Twitter is a kind of similar. It's about labs. And questions. Speak slowly, please. <laughs> um, did you find that the same structures were common in malicious files that targeted other readers? For example, things that targeted um, Apple Preview instead of Adobe Reader? Like well, somebody I read asked him this question, like, in, and my answer is like, I really don't care about the, the header because I just received the PDF, and the PDF it's my playground, like, I, I don't know if the PDF is trying to do something for Acrobat 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or if, you, if you, you're going to work on Linux or Mac OS only, or maybe, that's something that I, I never pay attention because I'm only looking the structure, and, and if I need to look, and now that information, what's, target, what's the target, the real target, I'll probably spend too much time. Well, when I started the research, like uh, I talked to the source fight guys, the VRT, the, they have the Clonavi, Clon 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 and they shared a lot of 
samples with me and say, those are malicious. Here you go. And they are public, so I sent to VirusToto <laughs> just to make sure and see the detection rates because I want to compare. I could try to figure out where it's gonna where it's supposed to hit because some some virus total will show a good name and say, oh, this is CV uh, 2011 something. And so you know that, oh, this target, the uh, Adobe version, blah. But I never, I never do that. If you want, if you want, I could share the, the whole, the whole virus total results, right? <laughs> there is no secret. It's, Probably it's a text file with other results. It's a rub script that go and it took forever because I, it. I was, I was just curious whether there was a pattern that is commonly used to attack yeah. preview, which is not commonly used to attack reader or vice versa. Okay, but no, no, I, my my only goal was to detect the malicious one, and doesn't matter which one is the target. Any questions? More questions? All right. Oh, thank you.